mentally a quarterback. It's like studying for a final every week. I have an entire routine every week, and that's something that nice. I find a lot so more clear. So it's just you just getting in your head and just I'm thinking about it. Yeah, men allowing you not to have any external distraction, just literally you thinking and visualizing everything. Visualization is key. And one of my yeah. mentors, oh, Mike yeah. Pulaski, who played a cow when they were number nine in the nation and played many years pro, he said the biggest thing that took a step up in his game was visualization. So that's something that I'm working on now a lot nice. that hopefully I can implement this season. It's Daniel, aka Pooch, taking a break from behind the camera to let you know that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp, a completely online therapy service designed and suited to all your individual needs. Sometimes things that stay tranquilo can get a little stressful, and we've had our fair share of challenges that we have to get through. And the possibility of having a therapist in our corner can be that factor that gives us a drive, motivation, and determination to keep bringing our vision to life and sharing what we create with all of you. So if you think a therapist might bring you those same benefits, give BetterHelp a try. Just fill out a brief questionnaire on their website and get matched with a licensed therapist today. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash tranquilo to get 10% off your first month today. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P slash tranquilo. And now let's get back to our regular schedule program. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Stay Tranquilo podcast. We're here with uh, Fernando Mendoza, class of two thousand, class of two thousand twenty-two from the from the from the C C yeah. Pride, um, and also quarterback at, at Cal right now. Um, we're gonna get into a ton of things, um, but before we get started, would love for you to give a little intro about yourself and tell tell the people some of the things you got going on. For sure, yeah. First of all, thank you so much for having me on. Of course. Uh, uh, truly a blessing and you know amazing to connect with the brotherhood as he said yep. i went to columbus class of 2022 so just show how the brotherhood is reinforced <laughs> and that's the best you know all boys school in miami we got the and, we got the camera guy back there also columbus guy oh yeah pooch the pooch <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm now the cal quarterback so it's been a long journey from miami all the way to kind of the san francisco area but it's been an amazing journey i'm blessed through it all oh yeah i, I think uh let's rewind to before the Cal days, right? Yeah. And your, your time at Columbus, you guys won a, a state championship, which also was a, a big deal at Columbus after a long stretch of not being able to get it done. Uh, can you talk about what that year looked like a little bit at Columbus and kind of how everyone rallied around you guys? Yeah, so that was a special year in Columbus history. That year had been hyped up as we had a ton of national prospects mm -hmm. like Xavier Henderson, Elijah That's Roberts, right. and the famous Henry Parrish, especially <laughs> with the Sports Center run. Every, yeah, everybody yeah, in the Columbus yeah. community was That's like, right. that, was a, wow. that was a stiff arm, right? Yeah, that was a stiff I was like, especially on Belen, that was like yeah, the yeah. epitome true, of true. Columbus football. Oh my God, I forgot about that. <laughs> so iconic. So we started the year off really, really strong, and I was lucky to part enough to be a part of it. And throughout the season, by our sixth game, although we had all the hype, especially the national level with Sports Center, and I know we were pretty ranked pretty highly on max mm -hmm. preps, we ended up being like three, I believe it was three and three, like 500. And we lost uh, some subpar teams at the time, which was like South Dade, and a couple other teams that, that. We, we were highly favored to win. So at that point, some of the seniors, like Jordan Garcia, and so many other guys like Max Villar, Elijah, you know, Doobie, which is a Xavier Henderson, they all kind of brought us together and was like, hey, like, we need to turn this around. This is our last chance, because they lost in the States the last year by like a two-point conversion. So they were right. already favored to go to States, being 500 in the start of the season. And usually like Columbus, they go to the start of the season a little easier and then they pick up the games yeah. to like more of the Later national teams. Later in the season, teams. it starts to pick up. Yeah, so being already 500, they're like, oh shoot, like we need to pick it up or else that's it, our promise that going from junior year, all those guys, to senior year, we're finally gonna win it, we're finally gonna get over that hump, like we need to change something. And that was when a big culture shift happened. And we had so much talent on the team, but one of the things that stood out to me is when they played Mandarin and they lost to them, they were like, hey, Mandarin came out, they were all in the same matching uniform, 
They were all like single file line. And although that's, you know, it's insignificant, you know, they're like, oh, whatever. Maybe they're like, the coach makes them do it like that. It was a big thing is that we had so much talent on the Columbus roster, but it needed to be more disciplined. Right. We needed more discipline. And the players took that account. Anyone that who's late, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, even as a star player, they got like repercussions. Yeah. We played Western later in the season. Elijah Roberts, who was like American Conference Defensive Player of the Year, he showed up like two minutes late or something like that. And Coach Dunn didn't let him play the first half of the Western game. Holy shit. Which was like a playoff game at that point. And it was like a big game. Like we weren't winning by a ton. We weren't favored. And it was to show the team like, hey, this is discipline. This is the Columbus way. We're not doing like any of this mm -hmm. superstar massage treatment. Yeah, like exactly. you Columbus, we're playing the best players and we're being disciplined. I think that's like a big thing with Columbus, you know? Yeah. Everybody were kind of the grinding, you know, over there in Westchester. <laughs> so I think that's that's when it really, the culture really connected to the football program. Yeah. And Elijah, I mean, he's an amazing guy. I play against him this year at SMU. So, I mean, he's oh, a phenomenal player. Gotta, he's going to play in the NFL one gotta day. Got to mark that on the calendar. <laughs> yeah. Then after that, it was kind of, it was free flowing from there. Uh, the starting quarterback, Moody, ended up getting injured. And I ended up subbing in for six or seven weeks. And we ended up battling it out throughout the playoffs. And since that 500 mark that we talked about, undefeated since then. And we were lucky enough to win the state championship against great players. We played against Jalen Carter, who was a top 10 pick in the NFL Damn. draft. I Holy mean, you shit. see him now in the mm -hmm. Eagles. He's like wrecking things. Where the hell? Wait, where did he go to high school? A Popka. A Popka, that's right. And the only reason he didn't go like top five was because of character issues, yeah, yeah. which has nothing to do on the field. You know, yeah. on the field, He's you're not stud. you're not asking for a handshake. You're just you're <laughs> scared of the guy. And so, I mean, that was a great season and see Columbus and the community, like, even though I didn't actually, well, I, I held the field goal, but although I didn't actually like really, really contribute to in the actual state game, I was able to contribute to the season. Absolutely, and I saw there. the aftermath. We might have had like three or four parades. Like it oh, was yeah. like Columbus alumni who knew who I was. And I was like <laughs> the backup quarterback. There was a time that I was, I forgot what it was, but I know I was in a rush at the sunset place to meet with one of my friends. And I backed into somebody <laughs> had a car accident. And I was like, oh, this is so terrible. Oh, you know, I was God. like a 10th grade. It was my first time driving. And the guy was like, we ended up figuring, obviously with insurance, but it was a lot easier through the process because he was a Columbus alumni. His brother, brotherhood. He was like, "Yeah, just won. Let's that's go." Such a Columbus story. It's like yeah. <laughs> you you run you run into the guy. You're thinking like the worst case scenario, and all of a sudden, of course, it's a Columbus guy, and he knows. Yeah, you can play football at Columbus. Oh, don't worry about it. Yeah. You're good. And it's a Tesla. At this point, it's when they just came out. I'm like, oh shoot, <laughs> like I'm grounded for sure. So that's hilarious. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, like you said, it was it was like uh, the parades and everything. Oh. It was like uh, it was like. The, if we won like a Super Bowl, essentially, but at For the high sure. school level, I mean, that's essentially what it is. But the Columbus Network like took it personal and like they they really rallied behind yeah. him. I mean, there was watch parties at Sports Grill, like it it, it was a big deal. Yeah. Um. So you win the nat the 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 state championship. Obviously, then you become the court, the starting quarterback the year after, right? Yeah. And then you play you you finish your career at Columbus, and then you start getting recruited. Can you talk about that? recruiting period in your life yeah. where you know you start getting offers from schools and kind of you know making that decision of like what what's what's the next step in your in your life can you kind of ch go through that process yeah and the one word i would use to describe football recruiting would be subjective as it's not like swimming or track that they have the time so like, hey we know you're this good we know you're 39 seconds this guy's 40 seconds right there's so many aspects of potential, mm -hmm. of size, of just the character development and how good they are as a player overall. And I think a big lack in my recruiting process was the COVID. And obviously, you know, everyone could blame COVID and I'm really thankful how my journey ended up going out and I thank God for it all the time. But so once I started springtime is when the coaches come and see you. Especially a quarterback. Quarterback is a very subjective position. You see people like 100%. Tom Brady playing mm -hmm. and, you know, like Josh Allen. We also have quarterbacks like Lamar Jackson and like Brock Purdy. They're all super different styles. Yeah, it's not like O-line where you want the biggest, baddest guy. It's very subjective. So at that point, none of the coaches could come. And since all the national recruits played their sophomore year, the entirety of their sophomore year, it was tough to get recruited. So I had to wait till after junior year 
So after I had all the film, because the camps were still shut down. Gotcha. So I couldn't, the coaches couldn't see me in spring True. nor summer. And it was like wishy-washy if we were even going to play because of how bad it was in Miami Dade. about that whole COVID time. Yeah, that puts so, a whole wrench in things. So no one could see me. And then after my junior year, we had a great junior year. We went undefeated. We unfortunately did not win state because we didn't have the opportunity. We won the Tri-County, which we got a ring for because we were the two highest ranked teams. It was oh, Deerfield really? Beach okay. and Columbus. And we okay. won that game. So nice. we hold that as a championship. It's not a state championship, you know. But it's definitely a championship. And so after that, my film, after junior year, going to senior year, that's when I was really able to kind of mobilize my recruiting process. But all the schools like Alabama, Georgia, all these huge schools already have their guys going into junior year. Yeah. I mean, senior year. Yeah. Like if you see the Elite 11, mm -hmm. like those guys make bank off of, hey, like watch our Elite 11. We have the Georgia guy, we have the Alabama guy, and all these huge fan bases come together. Yeah, they're, they're recruiting way early in the process. Yeah, and you already know who the dudes are by 10th, especially 11th grade. Yeah. That's when it really is, 11th grade. And then so up to my senior year, the only real offer that I had was Yale. And I was like... Bro, I mean, yeah, I let's go. Like, I guess, like, yeah. we're not Ivy really League, good at football. I mean, yeah, great, great academic program, obviously. Yeah, but. great academic. Like, hopefully I make big bucks on Wall Street one day <laughs> to make up for football. But, and nothing against Yale. I mean. It could have been, like, the next Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. And <laughs> he's, uh, funny he, enough. He went to, he went to Harvard. Ivy League, right? Harvard, that's right. Yeah. Funny enough, that's, I talked to the all, like, most of the Ivy Leagues. I talked to everyone except, well, everyone except Harvard, and every one of the recruiting pitches were, you can be like Ryan Fitzpatrick. All they didn't <laughs> go to the school. <laughs> and which was showed a little bit of a red flag, because I'm like, you don't have your own NFL players to they're, go yeah, they're after. talking about another guy. You know, I want to play in the NFL. That's my dream. That's my aspiration. That's what I'm going to do. So oh, my yeah. whole heart, that's what I believe. So, you know, do a little red flag, but I'm like, hey, it's a great opportunity, great school, and it's a platform. It's a platform to play football. Mm -hmm. And... Actually, funny story, the reason I didn't talk to Harvard is because I got on one phone call with them. Because Coach Dunn, he actually coached at Harvard. Really? So he I said, know he coached at Catholic for a little bit. Yeah, so he coached at Harvard and he sent the contact. And at the same time, the school I was committed to Yale said, hey, we're gonna call you soon. Like from like, like the recruiting room with all the coaches and stuff like that. So I get a call, I'm like, okay, cool. And I pick up the phone and oh, it says Connecticut because the coach was from Connecticut. And so I pick up the phone, thinking it's Yale, but it's really Harvard. So I'm on the phone with this guy for 10 minutes, not knowing. And Yale and Harvard, this is like real deal. <laughs> yeah, Presidents go to this game. That's a rivalry right there. And I'm there. like, I can't, and at one, like five minutes of the call in, I'm like, he's like, you gotta come up to campus. I'm like, I can't wait to come up. You know, New Haven's a great place. And they're like, you know, I go Bulldogs. And he's like, whoa, 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 what? What did you just say? And I was like, yeah, go Bulldogs, you know? Yay, Yale. <laughs> Holy and God. I was like, at that moment, I just knew. Oh it was like, you know the moment where you're like. Yeah, you're like, I'm not you, getting you, into anything You play a nice language, you fricked up, you mm -hmm. know? I was like, oh. And he was like, that's the bad side of the river. Like, don't talk about that school. Like, and all that was stuff. Was he like genuinely upset? He was genuinely upset. Holy he was genuinely God. upset. And obviously they wanted to recruit. That's a crazy story. And I was like, shoot. And then from there on, I never heard from Harvard. Wow. Well deserved. But yeah. You know what? It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be. But then, yeah, so I was committed to Yale my senior year. We had a good senior year, but good is we made it to the semifinals. But now in Columbus, my little brother, he just won two back-to-back -back yeah. junior, like senior. So, so, so that's a down year. Mm -hmm. so, we had, so we had a down year for Columbus football. And after that season, I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to Yale. We got accepted. January, I mean, everyone already signs in December. January, I was like, okay, I'm about to press, like, hey, like, let me matriculate to the system, mm -hmm. let me go to Yale, you know? And then I get a call. And I'm like, okay, like, what's this call? And it's the Cal coach saying that the, their quarterback flipped to UCLA on signing day, and now they're scrambling all ahead. They're like, oh, shoot, like, all the quarterbacks already signed. Where do we go? And since legally you can sign people until like February 3rd, they still wow. like had an option to sign me. And the only reason the signing period is so above. And you had no contact with them no prior contact. to this point. West Coast. I barely even knew, like I always knew Cal and Stanford. Of course, yeah. I knew like Aaron Rodgers, Marshawn Lynch, but like yeah. I'd never watched like a Cal game. Right. I was like, Cal, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I literally caught one of my friends, Marcelo Mueller, he's at Michigan now. I was like, hey man, like, 
you know anything about Cal? Because we're on the phone, like, and stuff like that. He's like, yeah, great business school. I'm like, all right. Sounds good. <laughs> and I <laughs> talked to the coach. I obviously researched more about Cal. Yeah. And I was lucky enough. He said, hey, we're going to come down and see you throw. And that day I was sweating bullets. I'm like, okay, Holy this is my chance. Shit. Because do I got Cal with Aaron Rodgers, Jared Goff? Or, or do, do I, I go, go to like the Ivy League? Ivy route? League yeah. with I'm a Miami guy. I went on my official visit to Yale. Loved everything except about it, except it was negative four degrees when I went. Yeah. I mean, I can't play football negative four degrees, yeah. you know, every yeah, day. That's rough. So I was like, let's go. Ended up going well. They offered me a scholarship, and I Holy signed like shit. three days later. Wow. What a crazy turn of events. At the last hour, too. Last, I, I really thought that I was going to go to Yale. Yeah. And my mom kept on saying, like, hey, you're going to get a power five. At that point, there were five conferences. Right. Rip, rip the Pac-12. But, <laughs> but uh, right, I was like, no way, mommy. Like, there's no way. Like, yeah. I'm going to Yale. And then magically happened. So moms always know. Mom, moms always know. They yeah. always know. It's weird. So uh, damn, that's pretty awesome. Well, so then now you sign with Yale. I mean, with uh, with Cal. And then you start that process. Yeah. You fly in basically that summer, essentially. Yeah. Right. And start doing all the practices, taking your classes and all that. How was that transition from yeah. East Coast to West Coast? Yeah. So before I say that funny story, Yale doesn't have any scholarships because they're Ivy League. Right. So I actually signed on the December signing date with Yale. And then I for real signed in February with Cal. So Mr. McKeon, athletic director, is like, you're the first player that's ever signed twice in Columbus <laughs> history. But that's funny. signing that paper, I mean, I, I didn't know what my life was going to come to. I mean, the West I, Coast. Had you visited the campus before? I visited it once for two days. Okay. But it was like really quick because I got to get back and sign the, yeah. the document to go because there's a deadline. Mm -hmm. And I'd never been to California in the first place, like prior to that. So I was like, okay. Nonetheless, San Francisco, area, like, I, I visited campus and stuff, but because where where exactly is Cal? It's 20 minutes out of San Francisco, okay. and it's it's literally sandwiched in San Francisco, Oakland, gotcha. and then a sandwich in between there, and then up above you have like Napa okay. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that where Stanford is. Okay. So it's right by the coast. You can see the water from the stadium and oh, everything nice. like that. And so I was like, okay. And when I tell you, it's literally Miami flipped upside down, like everything opposite. It is, I mean, everyone's a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. It's definitely very different. And luckily I had, a, I had great roommates and a great support system to kind of get adjusted there. Cause I saw like a couple kids who, you know, it's tough moving away from home, mm -hmm. you know, moving away from home for- It's a tough transition. Full-time job, easy, yeah. full-time job. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like, okay, like maybe should I sign with my hometown team, you know, and I was lucky enough to have a great support system and have a smooth lane. Like obviously there was a points where I was homesick once yeah. and smooth points that, you know, I didn't get a, the culture. It was a little bit of culture shock, like especially in Miami, like in the high school, whenever you meet somebody, you're like, Hey, how you doing? And give them like a little hug <laughs> and stuff like that. So there's yeah, like a little uh, athlete. Hispanics are, were like touchy. Yeah, yeah. like very touchy, you know? <laughs> and there's a little athlete thing, you know, coming with all the new athletes. I'm like, okay. And so I'm obviously with my football boys and we meet another sport, like another woman's sport. I think it was like a track team or something. I can't remember. And I go, I'm like, hey, how you doing, Fernando? They're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> That's like the, the kiss the kiss on the cheek. Kiss I remember on the, cheek like thing. the first time I did that was like, I think in like New York or Boston or something. And it was the same shit. I went, I went there to like say, hi, I'm Andre. And they're like, is this guy trying to kiss me right now? <laughs> like, what, what's going on here? Yeah, where are these guys' manners? <laughs> so I had a little bit of reality check there, and I yeah. gotta like check back in when uh -huh. in Miami and you gotta adjust Berkeley. So that was definitely a little bit of a, a culture thing. And there's a ton of, a ton of amazing Asian food over there. Okay. A ton of amazing Asian and Indian and a lot of Mexican food over there. So that's something that I've been. That's kind of like exposed, yeah, right exposed no, to. No croquetas. No and, uh, croquetas. Or Actually, like there was that. like. At the facility, we had, there was like a, a day, it was like Cuban sandwiches. And everyone like knows I'm Cuban, you know, being from Miami and stuff. And they're like, oh, the Cuban sandwiches. <laughs> and I ate it. And the chefs at our school are amazing, like world class, because they got to serve world class athletes. Mm -hmm. And I love all of them. Shout out Mr. Rob, that's my guy. But the Cuban sandwich, and I was like, oh, it's just not the same, you yeah, know? It does, like, it, it was so good, but it was not the same. And all my, all my friends were like, oh, it's so a Cuban sandwich, it tastes like. Yeah, for I'm them, like, it's like, holy shit, this is amazing. But yet for you, you're like, 
this is like this come is down to Versailles or Casa Cuba <laughs> or something, man. You know, so oh yeah, that's uh, cool. Um, one question I actually wanted to ask you: Did you ever get recruited by like UM or FIU or? Like, yeah. I mean, considering like the local, right? It's it's tougher to get recruited from. I know yours was a little bit different because it was like at the last hour kind of thing, mm -hmm. but. They like to recruit locally. Did anything really happen there conversation wise? Yeah, like you said, like all the schools like to recruit locally. Yeah. Like Miami, like their motto recruiting, obviously they want to pull the Plus national there's plenty things. of talent down here. They want to build a fence. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what they've said in multiple interviews and stuff. They want mm -hmm. to build a fence, all the talent to go right to Miami. And I did get recruited by FIU, but the coach knew that he was getting fired. And he that was, was like, Butch at the time. It was but it was under that, and it was like the quarterback coach. He was like, "Hey, I know I'm getting fired in two yeah. weeks." Yeah, like, that they was a told mess me that during that time. Mess, and they're like, "Hey, I know I'm getting fired in two weeks, but I'm gonna give you this offer, just so you can get their name out." Got it. Okay. But I mean, there's no saying that the new coach is gonna right. Honor he's gonna it. have his system, and who's who's to know that he's actually gonna bring in the people that he was trying to yeah. bring in. He just said that he liked me a lot, and that if he was still the coach, that he would take me in, right. but that he didn't have that opportunity anymore. But he wanted to give me kind of for like social media, that if, if, if some school says, oh look, FIU offered him, let me take a look at him. Right, exactly. And then that senior year beforehand, it was still the Manny, it was the D Manny Diaz right. reign. And so I went to the camp and I was, I was pretty heartbroken because you know, I had a really good camp and stuff like that. Like they knew who I was because of the Columbus quarterback and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And they, the, the coach at the time kind of told me like, hey, like, well maybe, look at you for a walk-on spot gotcha. here. And I was like, and I had confidence in myself. I thought it was good enough for a scholarship spot, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, of course. All I mean, this you, stuff. Proved it. you proved it. And but. so I, I, I was definitely heartbroken then. I was a huge Miami fan growing up and everything. And it kind of did something, like something similar to my little brother. They were kind of like, hey, like, Got you. we really like you, but you know, we don't think you're, you're that guy. Right. So. It was a little heartbreaking for both of us, but luckily I have the chance to redeem myself as we play him this year. Oh yeah, so, so let's get into that. Yeah. Let's talk about, uh, so that was year one for you, right? At Cal? So this was year two. I redshirted this, my first so year. So you redshirted year one, and then, yeah. but technically el eligibility wise, first year, year two, this year. Yeah, yeah, you play this year. So from what I remember, quarterback one gets hurt at Cal, yeah. right? And then that's where you came in and started playing, right? Yeah. So it was kind of a weird scenario. I know you want to talk about NIL later. Yeah, but I do. One of this great guy, mm -hmm. amazing guy. We bring in this, we bring in this court, two quarterbacks actually, one from TCU and one from NC State. And throughout the entire fall camp, we're all battling, all three of us. And it ends up shaking out like the last practice. Like at one point, I was starting. And it ended up shaking out the last practice that I was actually third. Holy Going God. into the game. Like, it was very, like, hairs. Wow. Like, it was, this yeah, competition could be split. one A, one B, and one C, essentially. Basically. And so the starter goes in, and the starter in the second string, they kind of battle it out for the first four or five games. They kind of, like, they both, they both, like, one of the first has minor injuries, but then he ends up getting the starting job again, but then he loses it to the second string guy. So it was kind of like, our quarterback situation was shaky at the time. Gotcha. And the sixth game, I was like a little impatient, but I was also like, okay, like, my time you know, will like, come. you know, my time will come. It's this no, no one's playing lights out here, you know, like, and to take our team to the next level, we need good quarterback play, especially that's what like all teams need. Every, yeah, NFL, they, you know, every reality team needs. is quarterback is arguably the most important yeah. position. And although they're great guys, great quarterbacks, they know they're gonna do great things that are at their next school. Like at that point in time. The production wasn't there and the coach called me funny enough on my birthday i was talking to my family like, i gotta call i gotta hang up coach is calling yeah coach is calling, <laughs> coach is calling. This, is, this, is, this might be important he's like sunday night and he's like hey fernando just want to let you know we we value your preparation everything you've done for the program you're starting next week no matter if you throw 20 million touchdowns or 20 million interceptions you're playing for the entire game prove me right get ready i'm like Oh shit! Wow. Yeah. I'm there. I'm like, gotta hang up, guys. Like, you know, and this like, is how I many go days before the game? Seven days. Seven days. And at that point, I like, I had a midterm that week. At that point, I'm like, all right, this is my, this might be my only chance ever mm -hmm. being a two-star recruit, like very lowly recruited, like 
to ever play like a, and start a college football game, especially at Cal at a power five level. 100%. And that week we were playing Oregon State, who at that time had the number one defense in the mm-hmm. Pac-12 over Oregon, over Washington, over UCLA. Yep. Were they ranked and at that time? They were ranked. Yeah. They were, ranked. they were like 13. Top, top 15. Top 15. Yeah, they're yeah. th- they 12 in the nation, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow. So that night, I literally go, and that entire week, 7 and 9 p.m., just in the film room, learning everything about them, learning everything about them. And I was able to find out, like, a little bit of tendencies with them, which helped me on the field. And I was like, no matter what, I want my preparation to be so well And so, I mean, just be so, like, well thought of and just be so deliberate in my preparation that I'll be able to sleep well at night. Whether I throw 20 million interceptions or 20 million touchdowns, I want to sleep well at night knowing that I did everything possible, that humanly possible that I could do Mm -hmm. to make sure I have a good performance. And I get out there, the first two throws in the dirt. I mean, I am nervous. Like, my body's like, oh, my my God, a college football game, like, Columbus, Columbus, you played Tropical Park. That game Park. was in Cal or in? Uh... In Cal. Okay. It was a night game. And it was like, I'm like, oh, okay, like a Tropical Park, we have 200 to 500 people. Mm-hmm. That game, it was like 50,000 people there. Holy cow. You know, and you just look up in the stands <laughs> and you kind of get a little shell shock. Yeah. You're like, it's like the lights like this that you can barely see if you look in the uh, lights. You, you could try to mentally prepare for that moment, but you can't because you have nothing to, like as a foundational piece to do that. And that's a big thing why everyone redshirts. They're mm-hmm. like, none of these quarterbacks are ready enough to play. You got to yeah. get thrown in the fire. And I ended up picking it up. We had a great game offensive-wise, and we, we boat raced the number one team in the Pac-12. It was like, we lost 40 to like 50 yeah, that yeah. game. Yeah, I remember it being a shootout. It was a shootout, though. In that game, I mean, they've had, the Oregon State defense only averaged like 12 points allowed per game. That's incredible. Until, until up to that point. And so that was... That kind of led me into, hey, you're starting the next week. Exactly. And then we played Utah. And let me tell you. You guys had a crazy stretch of, of, of games. <laughs> the first <laughs> it was five crazy. games I played. Oh, no. I played the last, six, the last six games. All teams were ranked at some point. Top 20. Yeah. At some point. We play Utah. Then we play USC, mm-hmm. who's top 10 nationally. I watched that whole season. game. That game was insane. USC. Then we play Oregon, who was... A New Year's, they were like number six. And they're, one time they were number four in the nation. And then we play Washington State, who was ranked early in the season. That's right. And we play UCLA, who was ranked at that time that mm-hmm. we played them. And it was crazy. And being from the East Coast, you don't understand. And I, don't underst- I didn't understand the West Coast environments. When I went to Oregon, when I went to Utah, when I went to the Rose Bowl, UCLA, mm-hmm. it's things I've, I've always thought of, you know, Doe Campbell and Hard Rock yeah. and like all these other, and like Clemson. But going to these stadiums, it was surreal. It was like, wow, like I'm really playing in this. Like two years ago, I was, didn't have, only had an offer to Yale. And now like I'm playing <laughs> against UCLA to fight for bowl eligibility, the first bowl we'd, we'd made in the last four years. You yep. know what I mean? It's like, this is a big game. Or Stanford sold out. I'm like, this is like a huge rivalry. Like, hey, you're I'm talking about this. historic environments too. Historic. Historic. I mean, Stanford, no matter who wins, by how much or how well they're doing that year, mm-hmm. they storm the field. Absolutely. The year before, we only won four games. <laughs> they stormed the field when we beat Stanford, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. No, I, that, I, I can't even fathom, you know, and it's, it's crazy like hearing it from you, what the emotional side of it is, you know, like, there's you as a fan, right? Like growing up, watching that as a kid and looking at those environments and being like, damn, that is sick, right? Like I want to witness that at some capacity. And then being in that situation without really much of a expectation, you know, like you're saying, hey, yeah. week, whatever that week was that you started, you're starting here. And well, by the way, you're going to keep starting now because you're performing well. So yeah. every week is a new level of preparation that you're not necessarily used to. Obviously, you did your preparation at Columbus and yeah. you had your level of preparation there, but you're you're in a Power 5 program going against some of the best teams in the country and it's just like, go figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and, it's crazy. Exactly. And like you said, like, there's no expectations. Mm-hmm. So I have my wristband. The three things in my wristband was, praise God, it was play-by-play because something like quarterback, you do preparation, you got to mm-hmm. analyze the defense. At Columbus, all we got is to put it into the non-football audiences, cover three and cover one, 
which are very simple defenses. Right. And Cal, through the entire stretch of like those six games, I saw over 30 different coverages. So it was like, and it all happens very fast. Mm -hmm. And no one, just in high school, no one disguises. Right. And they're disguising. Mm -hmm. You're out there trying to like on the think level about your of own athlete play. too. On the other side of the ball, I mean, you're talking about speed is 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 way higher in in yeah. in, in that level of football. Uh, size, smart, you know, yeah. everything. You're getting the best of the best on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and I mean, this year we played. Last game in UCLA, I don't know if you watched NFL draft, but it was very offense mm -hmm. heavy. Yeah. And the first defensive player took was uh, Lai Latu. Yeah. We played him. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, He's U Utah? Uh, no, he was UCLA. UCLA, UCLA. UCLA. That's so right. I look at him, looking at the draft, and I'm watching him sack me. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, that's me. I'm like, hey, that's me. And I like, all of a sudden, I like three people call me, like my Columbus guy buddies, and they're oh, like, hey, saw you on TV. I'm like, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, you know? Not the right way to and see me. Not the right way TV. to see me on TV. So, wow. I mean, it was really cool, like being in these environments and seeing how much it meant to everybody and no, it's a it surreal was, experience it was definitely very surreal yeah so what's uh what's kind of the expectation this year yeah so this is the best we've finished in a while mm -hmm. and the one thing that i would say that's why we had to we were so improved last year was because of the culture change like mid-year we're kind of like hey we lost to oregon we got killed by oregon it was like 60 to like third like 20 or 30. yeah it was bad. Too. Yeah, it was bad. And we were like, all right, we need to win the next three games to make a bowl game. No matter what the coaches say, no matter what anybody says, administration, like, we need to come together, players, in differences. We got to, like, start being accountable, and we need to just level it up at yeah. all. Work harder, prepare harder, play harder. And I was like, okay, it kind of sounds pretty familiar. Yeah, It's like exactly. the Columbus little turnaround. <laughs> and... So going into the next season, we're going to the ACC, which is crazy because I can see the Pacific Ocean That's right. from we my apartment. We were talking about that before. Holy <laughs> I shit. can see the Pacific yeah. Ocean from the football offices, and now we're playing the Atlantic Coastal Conference. Yeah, holy cow. So, so it's going to be a lot of long flights. But next year, I mean, the Pac-12 was super competitive last year. I mean, mm -hmm. I think almost every team was like – almost every team was yeah. like ranked. Yeah. Like, so going to the ACC, I mean, our expectations are – you know, through the roof. I mean, 100%. we're definitely like, we made. No, you, you realize you guys can compete in that conference coming from the conference that you guys came from last year, like you're saying, was stacked essentially. Um, and what seems to be a weaker ACC, essentially. Obviously, yeah. you still got the Clemsons, the FSUs, the Miamis. Can't ever take anything away from those programs, obviously. But realistically, I think you guys got a shot. Yeah. So, what side of ACC are you guys on? I mean, what I is think, it the col uh, division? What is it? Remember, the, it's uh. It's the coastal Atlanta. Col is that what they're called? Coastal and Atlanta. I don't even know. I, to be honest, I should be more educated on that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just know the opponents we play, and although people, it's all that matters. It's not important. Yeah, Dima has <laughs> a weaker, games. weaker ACC conference. You still never want to take anyone Ex for granted. Absolutely like, not. Wake Forest, twenty twenty two. They were in the ACC championship, and then this year they had like a down year. They're worse exactly. than the ACC. Yeah. So that's like that. Those turnarounds can be super quick, oh, especially all the time because of the transfer portal. True. Like a team has a need, they fill it up like this. Boom. Mm -hmm. Like FSU, Miami, both new quarterbacks. Yeah. So the transfer portal, you really never know who's going to be good. Yeah. And who's going to be a little bit more poor. So I mean, this year our, our goal is the ACC championship, oh, yeah. and we know that if we win the games that we need to win. You know, even if we have one road bump or two road bumps, you know, throughout the way that we still have a really good shot at it. Yeah. And we're I mean, all really confident in it. It's a long season and you're going to run into those road bumps along yeah. along the year. And it's obviously coaches got their job, but I think you said it best. Like the players are going to rally and that sense of leadership, obviously, in the locker room is extremely yeah. important and keeping everyone focused on what what the end goal is, too. You know, I yeah. think that's that's always crucial. You look at the most successful programs historically. And it all starts with the internal kind of cultures in, inside yeah. and, and the attitude and, you know, no big egos in the locker room where no one's better than anybody else. It's, it's a team sport at the end of the day. And yeah. you got to rally amongst each other through the good times, right? Because it's always good. Everyone could be on the high horse when you're, you start the season 4-0. and But guess what? You can go lose the next four games and it's yeah. a completely different temperature in that locker room. For sure. For sure. And like you said, it all starts internally. And yeah. I think that we all have a chip on our shoulder just because – you see, and you see, like, we see the articles and stuff like that. Oh, Cal, Stanford, and SMU are coming to the ACC. And everyone's like, 
all right, we got a couple of low level teams coming to the ACC. Mm -hmm. They're like, what? Like, we're going to go win this thing. Yeah. And you see FSU trying to get it out of the ACC conference. Right. Go to obviously, the for playoff reasons, but we're like, and in their thing, they said that Cal and Stanford weren't like competitive enough or something like that. And we're like, okay, we play you guys. Like, like mm -hmm. we'll see about that yeah. and stuff like that. Obviously, they're a powerhouse program and we, we respect them, but. It's, we have a chip on our shoulder. We know a lot of teams Absolutely. don't want to come out all the way to the West Coast and make that six, seven hour flight to mm -hmm. come play us. I know they're not going to be excited to come play us. Yeah. So we know we can take, take advantage, advantage of them there or, hey, Cal's coming in our house, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's Cal. And then boom, and then we can surprise them. So oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. You guys got a chip on your shoulder, a ton to prove. I think that's exciting. Do you play Miami? Play Miami and FSU. Miami both. here? No, we play Miami there. And, and then Cal? next year we play Miami here. One, when's that Miami game over there? I think it's a little, it's like later six, in the season or six game. Maybe we make a little road trip out so, there. That'd be sick. Yeah. I'm not and a Miami fan though. Not, He's a Miami fan. Guy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, that's exciting. No, I, I love it. I forgot that you guys were going to the ACC. We yeah. talked about it before, but I, now that we're talking about it again, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big shift and uh, a lot to come with that, which is exciting. So. Let's get into some of that NIL talk. Obviously, yeah. that's the talk of land. And ironically enough, something happened, you know, yesterday with the whole NCAA yeah. lawsuits Crazy. and all that stuff. So there's a ton going on in that world. Uh, what's your point of view of like NIL right now and kind of the landscape that you've kind of seen it? Um, I know you guys did a campaign too um, with a burrito or yeah. something over there <laughs> in, uh, so, in California. Yeah, so... The, we launched the Mendoza Burrito at the local Mexican Berkeley spot that everyone goes to, La Burrita. And I've been friends with the employees for a long time, I ended up getting to meet the owners, and we ended up creating this burrito where all the proceeds go to the National MS Society. Nice. And my mom has MS, so it's a cause and very dear to my heart, and I love my mom, she's my inspiration. We talked earlier on the podcast about her, you know, yeah. having the belief in me. Mm -hmm. And Tom Brady said that all the great ones have always someone that loves them unconditionally. And my mom loves me unconditionally, and I love her unconditionally as well. So that was something that was really cool. It would have a positive impact in the community. Oh, yeah. You know, walk around campus, you're like, you know, a burrito, you know? So <laughs> it's pretty cool, but yeah, man, no. That was a burrito. It's, uh, it's like, it was like Cuban-inspired too, right? So it's, it's Cuban-inspired, yeah. so, you know, it's... You know, we try to do a little pork, but the restaurant doesn't serve pork. But okay. we, but we got around and did some chimichurri and stuff in it, and cool. we're doing some future, more Cuban heritage nice. aspects later down the line that we have planned. But oh yeah, like you said, the NIL space, how I see it, and a lot of my teammates mm -hmm. see it, and a lot of people just that like people that in the NIL space, like I wouldn't say agents, but I would say people that you know, collectives, yeah, maybe agents, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The rules are changing so rapidly. There's so much overturn. No one knows what's legal, what's not, what are you gonna get in trouble for? Like, and stuff like that. You saw like so gym. there's still a ton of gray area in there. So much gray area. So some programs are very, oh, I don't, we don't, we don't want to take that risk. Which but, you've seen a couple programs do. I think Boise State uh, came out saying something like, like, yeah. no NIL deals are coming through here, and it's maybe probably part of that reason. It sucks because players are obviously looking for that because they want to get paid. Players are looking for that. But it's, yeah, I didn't know it was like that. Though. And a lot of programs are like, all right, no gray area, we're going to attack, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's been a lot of discussion, I mean, especially in the administrative level, if you want to get in trouble or not, but it's not being enforced. It's not. It's truly not really being enforced, and that's where you see. I guess you got hit with some sanctions on NAL, right? I think. I think they got some sanctions, but I think none of them is severe. You right. know, none. They're not. None of them are losing. I mean, to what does NIL outweigh the costs? Right. You know, they bring exactly. in this amazing transfer class. They're great. They go to the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. They don't care about those sanctions anymore. <laughs> no, no, exactly. You know, and all this and all the NIL stuff is just other programs trying to blackmail and mm -hmm. you know bring down other programs exactly but the one thing that's super interesting but that kind of salad mix of everything together of the nil transfer portal and all these new rulings mm -hmm. is that you said is that all the great teams start inside the locker room is the ego thing now hey i'm not better than you you and me are the same we're brothers right i'm gonna fight for you you're gonna fight for me no ego we're the same 
Now, whoa, 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 now we're being valued. You're worth 100K, I'm only worth 20K. What do you mean we're the same, you yeah. know? Maybe you get on me, it's like, huh, at least you're getting paid more. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, the money makes it, it changes the whole dynamic. Money changes the politics of the locker room. You don't see it at Cal's, you have a really good culture and, it's, and no one's like putting money in other people's faces mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But at other programs that I've heard I have friends at, I'm not gonna disclose that, right. they say like, hey, like people are like, hey, I'm making this much, like what are you making? And they're not making anything. And nonetheless, there's still walk-ons on the team that are paying for college. Right. That like, especially like at Cal, we have a couple walk-ons who are gonna be like yeah, great this year, you know? Coming out of their own pocket. And so, I mean, it's, it puts a lot of politics in the locker room, and especially yeah. with the schools now, now the rulings even right. makes it more complicated. Mm -hmm. The rulings, the school's paying directly. Like for example, FSU, public school. That needs to go on record how much you're paying everybody because they're employees. Right. So now you can search up online how much is the FSU quarterback. Very true. How much is all these, all the, how, how much are the, all the Gator players uh, getting paid? Yeah, it's public And knowledge. I think that's gonna have a lot of animosity within the locker room mm -hmm. and people, well, jealousy. it's gonna set an expectation too. Imagine, you're gonna go, you're a player that's being recruited. You're gonna go now look and it's like, okay, FSU, they're getting paid 50K here. Uh, you know, UCF, they're getting paid 25. At Bama, they're getting paid 100, and then you're like, well, I'm gonna go there then because I'm seeing that they just are paying their student athletes X amount of dollars. Yeah. And it just alters decision-making now too. It's, it's, that to me is kind of like the part that I wish they could have maybe put a little bit more emphasis on when they were kind of trying to build this program out of yeah. all NIL and, and some of these other things that the NCAA is doing right now. But right now it's like, highest bidder just go there you know and then what's what's what it's creating is these players aren't even fo so focused on football obviously they're extremely talented and they have every right to go to these programs but they're so more worried about their personal image as a person right and building their brand and getting the social media followers and and having all this hype around them yeah because then what is it going to do that big donor that's got a million dollars is going to say hey go over here and i'll never forget the day that Travis Hunter got flipped to Jackson, Jacksonville State or Jackson State, right? Yeah. Portnoy basically bought him for a million dollars, essentially, and because he was boys with Dion, and Dion got him to go there. But he was an FSU guy, number one recruit in the nation at the time, and flipped for a million dollars. Obviously, they went to Colorado, and he got a bigger platform and a bigger stage. But if you're thinking NFL, Jackson State or Jacksonville State... It was Jackson State, right? It was Jackson State. Jackson yeah. State. Jackson State was not going to give you the best shot of making it to the NFL because the NFL scouts, even though he might have all the raw talent in the world, are looking at him and saying, hey, you know what? You're not really playing against the best of the best, so how can we really accurately grade you to make it to the pro? He just took the money and rode. They maybe had a plan of action that Dion wasn't going to be there for a while and then obviously made it to Colorado and, and all that. But you, you can already see that people were altering decisions based off of the fact that where am I going to go get the money? And I get it. Imagine being that kid that didn't have, that comes from a rough, you know, rough neighborhood. They, you know, their mom yeah. is working six jobs. Their, you know, the brothers all share a, a bedroom and there's six of them in the bedroom. Like money is essential. But at what cost does it become a problem, right? Like obviously there's the essential component that these kids deserve to get paid, but there's also the component is like greed. And like you said, egos that get involved. And I think that, creates a larger problem in the long term of all of this. Yeah, it creates a large problem. I mean, a couple of things I'll say about it is football, first off, all is everybody understands it's in the business. Football is a very, very physical sport. Right. At any point you saw like Jordan True. Travis, boom. That's a good that's another good point. Let, let, let's say let's say if he was like in his first year, boom. Yeah. His NIL value goes down at least like five hundred thousand dollars, you mm -hmm. know, with a torn, like like destroyed knee yeah. and everything. Like luckily he's like playing the NFL now, which is amazing for him. Yeah. But it's very physical. I mean, you never know when your last snap is gonna be. It's I very mean, true. and you never know, especially like Drew Bledsoe, like his last snap, and he could come back, but you know, never know. Someone could rise up. up. Yeah. So, I mean, the NIL, I mean, especially with the transfer portal, is that kids are entering the transfer portal now, and they're getting these offers, and whether they go to these schools or not. They have value and they have leverage of their own school. They're like, hey, FSU wants to pay me 50. Right. What are you gonna match? Are you gonna match it or what's gonna happen? Yeah. And then it's a mini NFL, basically. 
And especially with the egos and stuff like that, with the brotherhood. Like one thing you see about the Columbus, and well, I think Columbus is so great at football now, is the brotherhood. The culture's established. And I mean, we we all go work out there, like you said. Yeah. Like Jordan, you know, like Elijah Roberts, Henry Parrish, Xavier Henderson, Shiloh Conway, and Trinity Conway. I mean, you just see all the Columbus guys working out there. Yeah. And we're all working. It's because we were together for three, four years. Transfer portal. You're me and your boys, and let's say you're the receiver. They bring in somebody, and he starts right over you because they pay him. That creates a little bit of tension in the locker room. Absolutely. You know, we've been boys for four years, and all of a sudden, they bring somebody else in. That could throw off the entire locker room dynamic. It's very true. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Chemistry Our boy huge. Johnny. Yeah. Like, he was the guy. Now, all of a sudden, you're bringing somebody else in. Oh, you're bringing someone else to my position? Yeah. You don't believe in me? You're paying him more than me? So it very gets true. really, I mean, it's, it's a fierce landscape. And, I mean, hopefully some regulations... It's gonna, gonna it's, gonna it. it's gonna take a while, I think, to balance out. I mean, I think it was the inevitable of what was always gonna happen. For sure. But it was just like I think they just said we're gonna open the floodgates up and yeah. we're we're gonna figure it out as we go. Yeah. I mean, I, the reality is the NC, you know college football was making a ton of money, you know, so they had to make a way for everybody else to kind of benefit, you know, on the player side of it. But they kind of just said it's the wild west and we'll figure it out as we go yeah. and we don't really care what happens in between. But I mean, eventually, with all this money that's going to be poured, you're going to assume that there's going to have to be some sort of like cap. Yeah, I mean, you would think so, but you never know. Especially with I saw a lot of you know private equity. They want to get into yeah. college football. Yeah, that yeah, it's been yeah. like the a Sa- whole the Saudis or the, the Saudis. Saudis are talking to the Saudis about trying to buy them out to go to another conference. Yeah, so I mean, it's I mean, it is crazy. But the one thing I will say, and the one hope it has. For a lot of players is like you said a lot of players aren't really focusing on football now yeah you know what i mean there's a ton of like youtube channels True. and just ton of like all yeah, these yeah. ways they can monetize all these other distractions which mm-hmm. is great because they're monetizing but for the people who you know have that tom brady mentality that kobe mm-hmm. bryant mentality whatever you want to deem it as there is so many distractions that people are getting so so distracted that it's i would say that it's pretty not easy because nothing's easy but it's easier than ever to get to the NFL because kids want to stay an extra one or two years True. to get paid more. Mm-hmm. Kids are now like, hey, let me just, I'm doing social media now, yeah. you know? And so if you were to be a college player who would grind, just let's, let's say every, back in the day, everyone used to grind, head down, no, everyone's like, I need to make it to the league for the money, you know? No matter what neighborhood or where you grew up, like I need the money. I want to be successful in my career. So everyone puts their head down, grinds, 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 grinds. Then you have that whole entire pack of players like, hey, trying to enter their third year, the year of eligibility, mm-hmm. or their fourth year. But now you have players who are grinding distractions, you know, like doing photo, like photo shoots, right. just doing yeah. just what, whatever. Brand deals, whatever, all you that know, stuff that goes knows? into it. Yeah. And maybe too much at some point mm-hmm. that if you were to really grind, 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 it could put you ahead it could put you a step ahead not saying that it's a golden ticket but it could put you a step ahead 100 percent. then you would not have been that's exposed good, to and kind of that's a good point you, you almost look at it as like an advantage um compared to you know a distraction essentially where hey i'm not gonna partake in that for the most part you know i might do a thing here and there but my goal is football and i'm gonna double down yeah. on football because that's what i want to do yeah and like i heard a story it was a kid at don't quote me on this, but it was a kid in the, it was an ACC conference. It was a team ACC conference and a quarterback, you get four games for red shirt. And basically he played four games in the middle of the season because the starter got hurt and they wanted him to start the last three games of the season. But he said, no, I want to forego those three games, not play, let someone else play. Cause I know my NIL value is high and I want to transfer somewhere else. Are you serious? So they let another kid play who ended up being better than him, and the kid's NIL value dropped. And he ended up transferring, but like... Holy snap. But also, like, people need to realize, like, if you're not playing those three games, like, that shows other schools how you, like, what your character is. Right, like, that's you're, exactly you're a quarterback, what I was about you're a leader. Mm-hmm. But still, people are so enamored with their NIL value. Oh, and I'm being treated amazing. Yeah. I'm not being treated enough that they're always looking for the quick way out. Mm-hmm. Hey, like, I... Like, just look at what's in front of you. Like, you're starting at this ACC program, you know? Like, yeah. 
this is an amazing don't take opportunity. For what you have. Don't take for granted. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. like you might make an extra whatever, a couple of dollars. I mean, the end goal should be the it's NFL. Football. I mean, my yeah. end goal is the NFL because oh, yeah. that's where, you know, that's been my dream, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a good, that's a good point. And it's, it's cool hearing that, you know, from you as a player and hearing like kind of like that internal point of view because it, it's, it's a monster of a, of a topic right now. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap up, we're going to do like a, a quick uh, rapid fire questions. Um, so, um, first question I wanted to ask you was, hey, what's your favorite Cuban dish? Like when you're back here in Miami, do you have a, like a go-to, uh, <laughs> dish that you have to go to? Uh, the one thing I will say, it's not really a dish, but I would say it's a side. Okay. <laughs> Arroz con frijoles. Got Everyone, right. I gotta yeah. have it. I, I was a fairly skinny kid and now I've bulked up because <laughs> okay. these guys, like I see them on TV, but when they're hitting you in person, I mean, it is like, <laughs> oh, I'm like, how can even, yeah. someone even grow and be I that muscular? I get up if I took one of like, those hits. I didn't show you, I'll show, I'll show you a picture after, yeah. maybe you can put it on the screen or whatever. This guy, Oregon, he sacked me and I'm like, this guy can't be real. <laughs> like, how's he real? He's like tall, I think I'm a tall guy. Yeah, yeah. He's way taller than me, way stronger than me. Just So I needed to bulk up a little bit. And even from a young age, like playing in Columbus, like higher level football. Yeah. And so my mom would make the best at Roscoe Free Hollis. And it's not the same as just putting a can of white rice and a can of black beans. Like there's there's an it's art to making. Homemade, it hits different. It, it hits different. Love. So I would say that's that's my thing right nice. there. Nice. Uh, do you have a favorite route that you like to throw? I- oh, okay. So I would say, I mean, to be honest, whatever gets me the completion would be the right answer. <laughs> and whatever gets the ball to my playmaker the easiest. But I would say my favorite play, I would say kind of like with the routes, I mean, it needs to be like a bread and butter play. I love, especially for us, I love the play action plays. As we have an amazing running back and amazing offensive line, running back Jay and I, he's like ranked the third running back in the nation this upcoming season. Oh, like so that. everyone bites up. We have like an either a nice big post, go or corner route, and a couple overs to one of my best friends at tight end, Jack Andrews. Hell yeah. And then a couple of people in the flat that's easy to check down to. So those are some of my favorite plays. Nice. But whatever whatever a good play Coach Blesh calls, shout out Coach Blesh and Coach <laughs> Gilbert. So whatever they call, I'm, nice. I'm good with You're good with that? Yeah. Uh, what's, uh, what's the game day playlist look like? So funny enough, my philosophy changed on that midway through the season as – a quarterback, the week of the Oregon State game, the reason I was in there 7 to 9 p.m. wasn't because I was working out or wasn't because, you know, anything physical. Because at that point, the work's done. You're not going to do anything in a week that's going to elevate your game Mm -hmm. major from, you know, maybe like a mid-performance to an amazing performance. Right. That work goes in the offseason. You just got to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Mentally, a quarterback, it's like studying for a final every week. I have an entire routine every week. Saturday game, we win, happy, whatever, celebrate with my teammates. Sunday, come in. I need to at least watch and label four games of that team. Whatever it's previous season, if he's a DC at another school, watch that team. It was the year before. I need to watch at least four games. Mondays, first downs, first down and tens. Tuesdays, second downs. Wednesdays, third downs. Uh, Thursday, uh, wait, wait, Wednesdays, third downs, uh, third downs. Thursday, uh, we have like red zones and special situations, like two minute, fourth downs gotcha. and all that stuff. And then Friday, kind of like a little test. So what I'll do is I'll play those four games back and I'll be like, pause it pre-snap and I try to go through this pretty quick. I'd be like, hey, what coverage are they playing? You know, we'll play what I call here. So I kind of have the call sheet there. And I'm like, hey, we'll play what I call here. And then me and the OC, we kind of go through it. So when I'm already, I'm there, we're Doe Campbell, it's third and three. I'm like, all right, Wednesday, I already know all the coverages. They do third and three. So I'm like, I'm expecting this call and this call. And the play calls, uh, the OC calls it, and I'm already ready for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we're in the same way. So you're already mentally kind of viewing exactly what to expect in that situation. Yeah, so I'm going through my notes the entire week. And that's why you see quarterbacks like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, so successful. They're not as talented as Patrick Mahomes or all these other guys physically. But their preparation. But their preparation. And that's the thing is when I listen to all the music, especially the music that gets disposed in the football space of all like the rap and hip hop, it kind of clouds my brain. Yeah. It's like you're getting so hyped up. I'm getting so hyped up. I can't Mm -hmm. think straight. You know, I'm getting so hyped. I'm going with the momentum. Quarterback, I'd play by play because you can't go with momentum. 
you need play by play. Hey, new play, you reset. Gotta, you got to stay grounded and you got to stay in you control. Stay grounded. The moment you go with the waves, I mean, that's that's when it gets a little risky because, yeah, you can go up, <laughs> but as soon as you go up, one, one or two back completions, you go right down and down. the team goes down. So actually, like I saw Josh Allen, he actually listened like the classical music mm -hmm. or like it was like reggae or something like very chill. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that, but then the end I just stopped on game days. I just don't listen to music. Really? Because it clears my head. And that's something that nice. I find a lot so more it's clarity. Just you in. just getting in your head and just I'm thinking about it. Yeah, meant allowing you not to have any external distraction, just literally you thinking and visualizing everything. Visualization, visualization is key. key. And one of my yeah. mentors, Hell Mike yeah. Pulaski, who played at Cal when they were number nine in the nation and played many years pro, he said that the biggest thing that took a step up in his game was visualization. So that's something that so, I'm working on now a lot nice. that hopefully I can implement this season. Yeah, you, you see that a lot. With a lot of the biggest athletes across the board, golf, yeah. you know, golfers are really big about the visualization because that's such a mental drain, essentially, where it, you, yeah. you don't have a team around you to, you know, elevate you or motivate you. It's, it's you thinking about the shot and not getting too much in your head when you're standing over that ball. You know, football, obviously, same thing. Baseball, same thing, where they're there before the games visualizing every scenario in their head, you know, and yeah. visioning, go make that play, you know, to left center field where I might have to be full sprint and make that play on that wall, right? Yeah. Or th the throw at home or the pitch that I got to throw, you know, like all that's in your head. And it, it's a good point because yeah, music emotionally can get you up, right? You know, it, it has that effect, but like you said, it, it can actually dilute it because you're not thinking about the things that are going to go into your actual performance. Exactly. Exactly. And some of those, like there's a visualization. One of the big things you visualize, like, especially in those pressure moments. So, when all the adrenaline and cortisol runs through your body, you recognize it and you're like, okay, I'm not gonna let this affect me because it's like fight or flight. You don't, you don't wanna, f a lot of people get scared in the big moment. And there was a couple of moments last year that I was like, oh shoot, like I'm in this moment, you know? Like mm -hmm. this is like, hey, when you play, like what are, you, what are we gonna do? I'm talking to myself. Yeah. And being with a visualization this year, I mean, able to visualize that play, hey, it's a game winning play, you know, let me recognize those feelings. And then I take it in order to not have the flight, but in to take all that energy and put it into the fight. And I'm ready for those situations now. And that's something that I'm really looking Dude, forward to have this season. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's powerful stuff right there. Like, I mean, good for you, dude. Yeah. Like that's, that's impressive because that, that showcases a powerful yeah. human being in my opinion. Like, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've seen the the Kirk Cousins thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what that reminded me right there. I was like, yeah, you know? <laughs> and that's, that, that sh it shows, it, sh it shows, man. So good for you, like yeah. we're rooting for you. I think it's gonna be an awesome season and uh, keep doing what you're doing. We're definitely rooting for you. A lot of people are, and we're excited to see you uh, play this year, man. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. I mean, it's an amazing podcast and I know it's, as an amazing Miami and huge audience. So I'm just <laughs> glad I could put out there for the yeah. Columbus Brotherhood Absolutely. and everything. And look forward to staying in touch. Yeah, awesome, bro. All right, appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much. See you around.